welcome back to Spoil Rotten Bees. I'm Juliet um, and it's really lovely to be back with you on YouTube and on Facebook. I've been away for a little while. I've had a lovely holiday. My husband took me away to um, Zanzibar, which was very exciting. And um, so, yeah, I've got a little bit of a suntan, and, um, but I'm rested and I'm back with you all. So it's really lovely to see you all today. I have got a cute little pair of earrings to show you. It is these gorgeous little secret garden earrings, which are finished with the cutest little ladybird and a little leaf. They're very springtimey. Um, they're really, really pretty. And there's a free downloadable pattern over on the website and a bundle with everything that you need in it as well. So I will put links to those. Um, but I must just tell you, first of all, as well, about before I start telling you how to make the secret garden earrings, I need to tell you about my gorgeous earrings that I'm wearing today here which I am in love with. They are beautiful. They were very kindly um, gifted to me by Ruby Rock. Um, Ruby um, shops with us, um, Ruby Rock shops with us at um, Spoilt Rotten Beads. I should say Annette actually, because I think it's Annette at Ruby Rock who made these earrings um, for me and they're just stunning. <laughs> I'm really pleased with them. So thank you very much, um, Ruby Rock. I will pop a link to Ruby Rock's Facebook page over um, on the description for this video as well. So you can head over there and take a look at her wonderful designs. But enough about these lovely earrings. I'm going to show you these gorgeous earrings today, which are perfect for spring. So these are the secret garden earrings. You'll find the free pattern over on our website. I'll just take them up to the camera so you can have a, a good old look at them there. Really pretty. So I'm going to guide you through step by step how to make them. I'm also going to talk about some variations. You could make yourself a matching necklace or bracelet as well. Um, and um, I'll be answering all of your questions. So if you've got any questions, pop them below and I will do my very best to answer them for you as well. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out next time um, we do an upload or we do a live. We've got some really exciting lives coming this month with um, Gemma Crow and um, with the um, lovely, lovely Debbie, Debbie Kershaw as well. So, oh, I'm losing my voice a bit. Anyway, let me get on with me. So these are the really cute little secret garden earrings that I'm show, gonna show you how to make today. They've got these lovely little ladybirds on them and they're finished with a lovely wavy lit check glass leaf at the bottom. And we have used our FGB size 12 seed beads in five different colors to make these. You'll find these over on our website. They're really lovely beads. They're nice and inexpensive. Um, they're a great alternative to the more expensive Japanese seed beads and they're perfect for this kind of project they're also really good for stringing projects too um, we've got quite a few colors at the moment but we've got even more colors coming soon so keep an eye out on the website and you'll find even more colors coming very very soon so there is a free downloadable pattern to go with this uh, video you'll find that on the website and there's a link to that in this um in the the chat and the um in the uh, description for this video tutorial as well um, it's got lovely easy to follow um, photographic instructions so if you're a visual learner then um, you'll find that really helpful um, so what I'm going to do is just guide you through how to create these earrings how to make these little pointy flowers this is a variation on daisy stitch um, which um, is one of my favorite stitches and it seems to be very fashionable at the moment as well there's a lot of daisy stitched jewellery out in the shops right now. I guess it's just perfect for spring, isn't it? So let me just bring the earring up to the camera so you can see a little bit better in close up how they look. You can adapt this pattern to make yourself a matching bracelet um, or a necklace. Um, you just need to keep be keep beading, keep adding more more beads on, keep making this, this lovely little vine even longer than it is to be able to make yourself a matching necklace um, or um, or bracelet. So I'm going to clear um, things away, kind of shuffle everything up my bead mat and I'm going to thread my beading needle. I'm going to be using a size 10 beading needle and I'm going to thread my beading needle with around about a metre and a half of beading thread because I hate running out. I'd rather have a little bit more than risk running out. So about a metre and a half. You won't need that, but um, that tends to be the length that I'm happy working with. Um, and then I'm going to come back to you when I have done that. Um, I'm sorry about my little dogs barking there. I think the postman is just arriving 
at the door um, delivering our, our post because I'm nice and early this morning. So sorry about the dog. I will come back to you when I've threaded my needle and I'm ready to start beading. So I've threaded my needle up and I'm using Fireline, six pound Fireline today because I want these earrings to be a little bit stiffer than they would be had I used Dura Thread. Dura Thread gives a lot softer drape, whereas I want these to hold their shape a bit more. So Fireline, six pound Fireline is perfect for this pattern. I'm now going to pick up one of my silver beads and take it down towards my tail of thread and I'm going to sew back through the bead so that this bead forms a stop bead there and pull tight and I've just left a little tiny tail I don't need a big tail of thread because I'm not going to attach anything to that later on um, so you don't need a long tail of thread about sort of 10 centimeters is more than enough and I'm now going to pick up four of my silver beads. And if I just bring these up to the camera, you can see um, how even they are, actually, these FGB seed beads. They really are quite even, even though they're not a Japanese bead. Um, when you see them on the, the thread there, you can see they really are quite even. Um, I'm going to now pick up one dark pink, one light pink and one green bead. Take that down towards everything else there. And I'm now going to thread back through the last three silver beads that I added. So I'm just going through the last three silver beads there. I'm going to pull it around and shuffle everything down towards my tail. And you're going to end up with something that looks like that there okay and now i'm going to thread through that first pink bead there and i'm going to pick up one dark pink one yellow and a dark pink and then go back through the dark pink bead and then back through that first dark pink and the yellow that I just added. And then pick up three more dark pink beads and go back through the yellow bead there. And pull tight. And you're gonna end up with something that looks like that there, okay? Now what we're going to do is create the pointy tips to these flowers because these are slightly different from a regular daisy in that they've got a, a pointy tip to them. So to do that, what you're going to do is, let's get my needle and thread in the right position for you guys to see what I'm up to. I'm going to thread through this pink bead here and this pink bead here, and we're not going to thread through the middle pink bead. And what that's going to do is make that middle pink bead stand up proud. So I've gone through that first pink bead, and then I'm going to go through not the middle one, but the next one. And pull tight. And that thread, when you push it all down and pull it all tight, will sit like that and you see it's already made that middle pink bead stick out further than everything else okay and now what i'm going to do is pick up a dark pink bead and add that in the middle here next to the yellow bead so i'm going to go through that first pink bead that i get to I'm pulling everything nice and tight as I go and I'm going to do the same thing this end that I did with the other end. So I'm not going to thread through this middle pink bead, I'm going to skip over it and thread through the next one just to create that pointy end to the flower that we want. And now all I'm missing is a dark pink bead in the middle there. Pull 
hold tight. And there is your pointy flower. And what I like to do at this stage with these little flowers is just to neaten and tighten them all up by going through all of the pink seed beads one more time. So I'm just going to go through all the beads now in that flower one more time. And that just kind of neatens and tightens everything up, closes those gaps between the beads as well. Okay, nearly there. And I'm gonna come, I'm gonna thread the, through these last three pink beads here and show you where I'm going to come out. Just this one bead here. Okay. Okay, so you can see the bead that I'm coming out of is the one that's next to the pale pink bead. camera focus in. I've got a new phone and um, it's just getting used to it at the moment. It's got very strong focus but it's it sort of tries to follow me around. So I'm now going to thread through that pale pink bead. And I'm going to repeat what I've just done to make the dark pink flower to make a light pink flower. So picking up a light pink a yellow and a light pink. Go back through that light pink bead. And then through this light pink and the yellow. And pick up three more light pink beads and then go back through the yellow again and then we're going to repeat what we did to create that pointy tip to the flower go through the next pink bead miss out the middle one and go through the next one pull it tight and that just makes that middle bead there sit out in that little point. And then we want to fill in the gaps on the side by picking up a pink bead, going through the next, miss out the middle one, and go through the next. pick up another pink bead and go through the next. And there's our, our rather pointy flower. And again, I just like to tighten everything up by going through it all. One more time. Just has that nice effect of just pulling it all together, getting those beads to sit nice and snugly next to one another. And it also stiffens it up as well um, because, as I say, I want these to hold their shape, these earrings. And come out of that bead there. And now at this stage, I'm going to thread through the green bead, okay? And then up through sorry no I'm not, I'm not actually I'm going to thread through the green bead I was going in the wrong direction then I was going to be working towards my tail I don't want to work towards my tail there's my tail here I've gone through the green bead and then I'm going to go up through these three silver beads here. 
So I'm working away from my tail. Just gonna pull it all tight and then let you guys take a look at that, okay? And I'll remind myself on my pattern what to do next. <laughs> okay, um, and I'm now going to pick up one silver and three of my green. So I'm picking up one silver and three of my green. Because I'm going to create a little leaf now that's going to sit on the other side there. <clears throat> so to create the leaf, I'm just going to sew through the last two silver beads added. Okay, just those last two silver beads and that will bring those little green beads around to sort of sit in that it's kind of, kind of it's, it's kind of a leaf. We'll call it a leaf, it's a kind of a leaf. Okay, and now all we have to do is just repeat that two more times, repeat that pattern two more times in order to create our lovely little um, earring before we add on the, um, the ladybird. I keep trying to call it a dragonfly. I don't know what's wrong with me today. In order to create the ladybird, um, add the ladybird on and the leaf on as well. So I'm just going to remind you how we start off. So we start off with four silver beads. Okay, a dark pink bead, a light pink bead and a green bead. Okay, and then we go through the last three silver beads added. Make sure everything's kind of shuffled down up against itself. And now I'm going to go through the dark pink bead to create another flower. And then pick up a dark pink, a yellow, and a dark pink, and go through, back through that same dark pink bead that I was just exiting, and then go through the dark pink and yellow, and pick up three more dark pink beads and go back through the yellow bead and then we want to create that pointy tip to this flower so we're going to go through that first bead skip over the middle bead and go through the next bead and kind of just pull it all tight as you go if it goes a bit loose then just give it a wiggle and pull it tight and then we need to fill in these sides with dark pink beads so picking up a dark pink, going through the next bead, again, skip over the middle bead there and go through the next bead and pick up another dark pink bead. And there's your pointy flower, but we want to neaten it all up now by stitching through all of those beads again so that you add that strength in there and you sort of knit it all together so that it closes up the gaps. Before we start to make the pale pink one. I'm trying to be clever here and go through three beads at once. See, yeah, yeah, I've done it. Okay. So now I'm going to thread through the pale pink bead there. And we're going to repeat what we've just done for that next flower. Pale pink, a yellow, a pale pink. 
let's get my tail of thread out of the way and go through that pale pink bead up through the first pale pink and the yellow Whoop. must be nearly time for a coffee I'm starting to lose my thread here <laughs> pick up three pale pinks and go back through the yellow again we want to create that pointy tip so I'm going through that first pale pink bead and then I'm going to miss out the middle one and go through just the next one pick up a pale pink and go through the next one it's all got a bit loose this flower so I'm going to pull it all tight just now there we go miss out the middle one and go through the next give it a wiggle and pull it all tight pick up pink and then close up that gap and there is my second pale pink flower and again I'm going to tighten it all up going through it all one more time so the dogs if you heard them earlier in the video were going mad because the postman had arrived but it was their favorite postman who's been off sick for a while and is now thankfully well and back at work again um, and he's their favorite postman because he always brings them biscuits so they were very excited to see him because it's the first time they'd seen him for six months and he bought them biscuits of course so they were very excited boys okay so I've tightened up my pink flower there I'm going to thread through the green flower and then we're going to go up through the next three silver beads. So that's these three silver beads here. So, says she. Don't try and do too many beads at once, Juliet. Just one at a time or two at a time. There we go, gone through two, go through this last one, there we are, okay. And then we're now ready to create that leaf and I just have to look back at my pattern and remind myself how many beads I need to add to create the leaf. I've managed to throw my pattern all over the place in my workspace <laughs> and lose my place but I remember here we are a silver bead and three of my leaf um, green beads. I'll flip my work over because I just find it easier to work in that direction and then up through the last two silver beads so that's the very last one and in that group of three that we went through and then the last one that I just added. There we go. Pull it tight and there's my leaf. Now it will kind of sit, it, sometimes it tries to sit on one side but you can just flip it across like that because that's how we want them to sit. So I'm going to repeat that now one more time so that I have three sets of my flowers and then I'm ready to um, to add my little ladybird and leaf and, and add the ear wire as well. So I'm going to come back to you when I've done that one more time and I've got three sets of flowers um, on my um, beadwork there. So I've created my little vine there and I'm ready to add my ladybird. So I'm coming out of my last silver bead and I'm going to pick up two more silver beads followed by my ladybird and I want him to sit with his head 
facing upwards. So I'm threading it in from his bottom. And I'm going to pick up another silver bead now. And what I'm going to do is miss out the silver bead that I've just added, thread down through the ladybird, and then down through all of the silver beads in the pattern until I'm coming out right here where my tail of thread is. So, missing out the last silver bead I added on top of my ladybird, go through the ladybird and through the silver beads. I'm pulling it tight and the action of doing this of going through all these silver beads again is going to add a, get a little bit more rigidity to the piece as well which is great for an earring because I want them to hang with a little bit of stiffness there so that you can see the flowers and the pattern and I don't want it all to kind of be too loose so Threading all the way down, and then we're going to add the leaf on at the bottom. There we go. So that has really stiffened it up a bit as well. And I'm now coming out where my tail of thread is. So at this stage, if you want to, you can just tie a knot with your tail of thread to your working thread. So. I'm going to take the two together and just tie just a regular knot there. Again, that just adds a little bit more strength to the piece because then I'll be able to I'll be able to trim off my um, my tail of thread in a little bit. But let's add the leaf on first. So to add the leaf on, I'm going to pick up two silver beads, followed by my leaf, and then two more silver beads. like so and then see those are the silver beads and the leaf and the silver beads I'm going to thread back up through all of the silver beads one more time so again just adds a little bit more stiffness to the piece as well if you're finding that things are getting a bit too tight don't force it just switch down to a smaller needle if you think you need one. But you see, as I pull this all up now and tighten it all up together, you see that the leaf hangs really nicely there and it's sort of kind of a little bale that's made by those silver seed beads there around it. So I am now gonna keep going up through the silver beads We are. A few more to go. And then I'm going to go up through the ladybird and out through the silver bead that's on top of the ladybird as well. And my tail of thread is starting to annoy me now, so I'm going to trim it off in a sec. But I'm going to go out through that silver bead there. So it's all a lot stiffer now. It's all hanging just as I want it to, which is good. Let's get everything back into the middle of my bead mat again. Trim off my little tail of thread. And we're now just ready to add the ear wire. So to do that, I'm going to pick up two silver beads, go through the loop on my earring finding and pick up two more silver beads. And then I'm going to go back through that silver bead that sits on top of the ladybird but from the opposite direction. And there you've got it, your cute little secret garden earrings. I do think these will make really lovely um, 
if you keep going and you make yourself a, a bracelet or a necklace, it will be gorgeous. If you want to, you can strengthen everything in that little loop on the top where your earring is, just by going through all, all those beads one more time, which is what I'm doing here. Just adds a little bit of extra strength to the piece. And then you are ready to trim off your tail of thread. So I just find it's easy to go down through the ladybird. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna take my needle underneath between the ladybird and the last silver bead. So I get a little loop. I can go through that loop, which creates a knot, and pull tight. Do it one more time. Says she, one more time. Create that loop, go through that loop, and then just pull that knot there in between the silver bead and the ladybird. There we go. And then you can just, if you've got room, just thread down through a couple of silver beads and that will just pull that knot inside the silver beads and then you are ready to trim off your tail of thread. And there are your cute little secret garden earrings have really enjoyed making so thank you very much for watching and um, please do leave your comments below and do head over to our website where you can download the free pattern and you can also purchase everything that I have used in today's tutorial and I shall see you all very soon bye